The following Parkinson's Path podcast is provided by Leanna Marie with All About Parkinson's and Answers for Elders Radio. And welcome back, everyone, to the Answers for Elders Radio Network, heard throughout the United States and on local radio here in the Pacific Northwest. And we are here with nationally renowned author and um, amazing individual uh, <laughs> and expert on Parkinson's, Leanna Marie. And Leanna, um, I want to first remind everyone to check out Leanna's books. Um, she's got several books that are available um, for you to purchase. If you know of somebody that is in the process of dealing with Alzheimer's, or Alzheimer's Parkinson's disease, shame <laughs> on me. And obviously, Leanna, um, the names of your book are, I want to remind everyone, The Complete Guide for People with Parkinson's Disease and Their Loved Ones, um, Everything You Need to Know About Caregiving for Par Parkinson's, and you have an upcoming book happening called The Parkinson's Path. And so welcome back to this final um, segment of our show today. And it's kind of timely. Um, we're going to talk about caregiving during the holidays, which is a kind of a complex situation. There's a lot of families coming together, Liana, and I know that uh, many, you know, of our loved ones may be struggling with, you know, memory issues, cognition issues, balance issues. They may be living um, independently, but they also may be living in skilled facilities. And all of a sudden you're bringing them home for the holidays. And I'm sure you have done that with your mom when she was in skilled facility, skilled care. I'm when for is, sure. is that true? Oh yeah, for sure. And you know, we, we, um, mom lived actually eight years in nursing, uh, skilled nursing, long-term uh -huh. care. Um, uh, we were, we moved a few times. She was actually in four different s spots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, uh, you know, you learn as you go, as you probably know, Yep. Um, you know, nothing is exactly the way you thought it would be the first no. time. You tried. <laughs> and hence four different places that she lived in. We finally mm -hmm. got it right on the fourth try. Um, and for us, that was, um, you know, learning, uh, advocating that I did really, uh, I think made a difference in the long term. but for sure, you know, the Christmas Thanksgiving and Christmas, which were really, really near and dear to my mom's heart, um, were extra challenging, if you will, just because, well, for many reasons, but, you know, because you want to capture those warm, fuzzy feelings that you always had, you know, mm -hmm. with, with your mom. And, and I wanted her to have the best possible experiences, uh, which is sometimes tricky when you're in. Yeah, especially because not everybody cooperates. <laughs> no, no, they don't. <laughs> It's like, you know, I, I remember it's so similar to what you're saying. It's like I was a primary caregiver for my mom and I had it in my head that, you know, this could potentially be my mom's last Thanksgiving or last Christmas. Right. And I don't necessarily know what's in the future. I don't know what the crossroads are, but I'm starting to see her decline probably more than others. And so I remember that time of feeling the frustration because the family members weren't dialed in to make her a priority as much as I felt they should. Have right. Done. I totally <laughs> get that. It's the fa because I, and I got, I, I, I love my family. Um, but certain, you know, and I, again, everything's t in hindsight is 2020, mm -hmm. but, but at the time I would look around and go, can't you see that mom needs this, 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 mm -hmm. or this, um, you know, she's sitting over here in a yeah, corner yeah, exactly. and I'd be, you know, I'd be like, no, no, we need to do this. She can't, she can't walk from here to there, or she can't right. do this or she can't. Um, but you know what, that was my unique, I realized later, you know, I, I, I was different. Um, and my role was different with my mom than uh, my other siblings and they all had their own role. It was just different than mine. And so it wasn't that mine is more important. It's just that at the time I may have thought it was, but you know, um, I was fortunate that I had siblings that were helpful, mm -hmm. uh, throughout the journey. Um, and at holidays, I just need, they needed sometimes a little bit of like direction, if you will, <laughs> and say, Oh, could you guys help mom do this? Or could you guys do this? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Dave, my mom's second husband, God bless him. He, you know, he, 
he was in the trenches for some time with her and it unfortunately it meaning parkinson's got between the two of them and um they they ultimately needed to separate that's a sidebar but all that to say during holidays i know i i had challenges with dave because and you know i'm i'm this is nothing i wouldn't say in front of him if he were still here um he he definitely his patience was was not as let's say he plentiful if you will mm-hmm. as mine and so you know he wanted things done very quickly all the time and he maybe wanted a certain way and we just had to make some adjustments that he may not have wanted to make and i just said well you know what and, and the more i could focus on hey this is parkinson's this isn't mom that's doing this to you this is not let's try to remember mm-hmm. um what what really the problem is it's not mom mm-hmm. <laughs> um and we and you know to try to kind of see what are the most important things what is really you know, at the most important right now right well in, i think moment i think one of the things that you bring up i i'm hearing kind of a consistent theme from your story to my story to so many and that is expectations we Correct. all have different expectations over the holiday season and i yeah. think one of the things that you know we can certainly look at is you and i being the you know, the dialed in, you know, one that was under, that had educated ourselves. We, you know, we may be dealing with people around in our circles that may not be as dialed into what's happening. And so their perspectives are very different, but also so are their expectations. And I think that's the thing when, when, um, you know, one of the hardest things for me was, is to learn to let go of expectations from, of other people, because I felt at the same time, really, really alone in the process of taking care of mom. So oh, yeah. there was that piece of, I'm sure you felt that, you know, here I am with the, I feel the weight of the world on my shoulders and taking care of her. Um, This is a very important time of year. And the thing is, is what I would really like is for my family to step up and help, but I don't even know how to ask for help because I'm can't see the forest for the trees and yet everyone has their different perspectives um is has it was that your experience oh yeah and i and you know and and that and that's why i'm saying i don't want to because no one i hate to say including myself <laughs> is perfect and we all first of all we're all we're all fumbling kind of mm-hmm. trying to figure out how this how this how this is going to work best for mom and right. my way is necessary isn't necessarily the best way i just know this to be true right now sure. for mom that this is what she needs and so i can't blame anyone um but i certainly relate to the feeling alone and um you know holidays are they set you up to be like we we create this massive like you we said do. expectation <laughs> and then so then we're wondering why we where we're so let down well, how yeah. about we just change that narrative and say, okay, you know what? You know, I just look at the things that my mom, what are her favorite things? Things were not things, they were people. They were surround mom with her family. Her grandkids, for example, were her therapy. We put those in front of her or around her and she was happy as a clam. We didn't really need a heck of a lot else. Okay, maybe some turkey and, you know, that was good. Yeah. But, you know, some sweets. She loved the desserts, but, Mm -hmm. um, you know, there wasn't really a heck, a heck of a lot else that we needed to do, Mm -hmm. um, in terms of making it a happy time for her. You know, I was the one that was complicating things a lot. You know, I, she wasn't, she was just there living with Parkinson's and, and as she had the dementia set in more and more, it, you know, we, we did have to bring, um, sometimes we had to bring the holiday spirit to the long-term care home where she was at. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we had to bring the music there. We, we set things up there. My aunt, you know, she, she even, she would have like put on dance time at the long-term care home, you know, in oh, the, that's in, wonderful. You know, she would organize these kind of things like the music with the Christmas music, um, on the piano, she'd come in and play piano and bring the music to the people, um, and and stuff like that. Right. So when I felt that, um, you know, I was so alone, I had to remember, you know, that it, no, a, I wasn't that that was just my imagination (laughs) that my family was all there. And my, you know, I, I needed to dial down those expectations of the massive, you know, what Christmas maybe once was, um, Mm -hmm. that we can still get the essence if you will, the essence of what was that made it so special. And I think you're right in the fact that 
you bring up such a big point that Christmas doesn't have to be what it used to be. We can do things different. We don't have to decorate to the nines anymore. We don't right. have to do, you know, the over and above. And I've watched myself as I've gotten older. I do less and less during the holidays than I used to because I just don't have the energy that I used to have. I mean, I remember right. staying up till I was like two in the morning <laughs> with all the Christmas decorations after Thanksgiving and doing all this stuff. And so everybody would come down after Thanksgiving dinner and here, here's everything decorated like this yeah, that was yeah. me which was crazy right right I don't yeah. do that anymore no. <laughs> I know like what were we thinking right um but I know I but, know you know that's the thing again like I said before you know whether it's you know dementia or Parkinson's but it really did make us slow down and and put into perspective what's most important I think and and that's can be applicable to anyone really it's just Christmas time, it's, and at Thanksgiving, those are the times mm -hmm. when you look at yourself and you look at, you know, where am I at my life? What's most important? And yeah. oftentimes you'll hear family, friends, um, you know, what's, and, and for, for my mom, at least that was those, those were the most important things to her. Yeah. Yeah. So again, to each and every one of our listeners out there, if you are caring for someone with Parkinson's disease or if you've been recently diagnosed and want to know about the process, um, Leanna Maria is certainly available for all of you on our podcast network. Um, you also have a website, allaboutparkinsons.com. You have a Facebook group. And tell us about your books. Yes. And we are, you know, like I said, the complete guide um, is for people that may be newly diagnosed or someone that knows someone who's newly diagnosed. The caregiving book, um, everything you need to know about caregiving for Parkinson's is for obviously for people who are caring. And then the upcoming book, Parkinson's Path, I hope uh, early 2023 will be um, available so that we can talk about and you, you can hopefully relate to all the emotional uh, the, the emotional journey we go on when we're when we're affected by Parkinson's. Absolutely. Disease. Liana, Happy holidays to you. Have a wonderful, you you. wonderful holiday season and um, many blessings to you and your family. Thanks, Suzanne. And to each and every one of you, as we enter the Christmas holiday season, we wish you all the very best this holiday season. Until next week, be good to each other. The preceding Parkinson's Path podcast is provided by Leanna Marie with All About Parkinson's and Answers for Elders Radio. To learn more about Leanna's story, her books, The Parkinson's Wall of Honor, and more, go to allaboutparkinsons.com.